another video. It's good. We're on a roll here. Uh, I wanted to make a video this time. Uh, having done that initial video about sort of beginner painting and uh, things that I wish I had known. I'm just, just going to make a video now about my suggestions for starting out with digital painting, just some thoughts, definitely not a sort of authority on the subject and it's been a little while but I still feel that feeling of being totally overwhelmed getting started with digital painting and I can remember it from when I started as well, I think I might have mentioned in the last video, it's all very overwhelming. So many questions I had, uh, how do I get a style? What is my style? I want to paint like this amazing piece of artwork that I've seen, but then here's five other pieces of amazing artwork that are totally different that I also want to paint like, and how do I even begin? Never going to be able to paint like that, or like this, or whatever. How do I paint a tree? How do I paint a rock? Why can't I make this rock look nice? Uh, what software should I use? There's so many painting softwares. Uh, what tablet should I use? Um, I'm just going to say the hardware definitely has no effect whatsoever on painting. Uh, you can be painting on a little whack on bamboo or you can be painting on a Cintiq and it's all sort of personal preference really. Uh, I personally don't enjoy painting on a Cintiq which is probably good for my wallet um, but other people swear by it. Uh, but you can get just as good a result on you know the cheapest tablet you can buy. Um, should I use texture brushes? Should I not use texture brushes? Uh, where are all the tutorials? What tutorials do I watch? Uh, what do I learn first? Where do you begin? Um, it's difficult. At the end of the day, you have to learn everything from scratch. It's like learning to write or read. It's a skill. Um, even if you've done traditional stuff before, it's still, it's almost like a different language. Um, it's still very, very difficult. It's painful. Uh, it's very up and down experience. Uh, there's a graph of uh, improvement in art. Uh, I'll see if I can grab it. Which is very, very kind of uh, reassuring and also maybe a little bit depressing. Uh, so I'm going to grab one and then I will definitely uh, link it in the description um, because it's not my image. Uh, so let's open this image in a new tab and I will switch to my screen. So uh, it might be a little bit small uh, on the screen, but basically art is a cycle of your mental ability to see your like how good you are at your work and your actual ability. And these two uh, parts of your ability, they move independently of one another. So your ability to see your improvement will take a moment to catch up to your actual skill. So what will happen is you'll have periods where you have these art highs where your skill goes sort of higher than your ability to see how good you are at art. And then you will have these lows where your analysis actually improves faster than your skill. And so even though you have improved dramatically, you won't be able to see it uh, so much. And so you'll feel bad at art and you'll feel sad. It happens all the time. It's never going to go away. Uh, I'll link that in the description so you can take a look yourself because I think I just described that really badly, but you get the idea. Um, so what did I do personally? Like I say, I remember the beginner's struggle. Uh, analysis paralysis would kick in real hard when I'm trying to choose what I should do. Uh, like whether I should start making the art or should I be reading books? Should I be watching tutorials? Uh, learning art fundamentals, you know, they're called fundamentals. They sound very important. So, uh, should I be doing that? It's, it's very overwhelming. Um, I would say lay off on the kind of hardcore learning to start with and just try painting 
there were books that I did read when I was first starting out and they went totally over my head and I have reread the book since and I literally don't remember having read any of the content in the book because at the time I didn't fully understand what I was reading. I didn't have the context of having learned digital painting already, uh, at least very much. Um, so it does feel tempting to buy lots of books and buy lots of tutorials, but kind of, I find that reading a book or watching a video, it's not gonna fix your ability as much as you'd like it to. Uh, I tend to personally find that resources like books and videos, I'll pick up small tidbits of information but they're not the kind of, I don't immediately improve art from reading a book. There'll just be a few little bits of information that I pick up and the rest of it I'll sort of forget. Um, but it's good to have context of understanding digital painting somewhat before you start digging really hard into resources. So just start painting. Uh, traditional art is quite a good place to start. Um, traditional digital art they tend to inform each other somewhat so when I was learning right at the beginning uh, I mean I came from a traditional art background already so I'd already been doing uh, fine art at a level uh, so when I was about 16 17 I'd been studying art at school uh, probably not very well because often the curriculum from art kind of well school schools that they're not specialized in art um, the curriculum obviously isn't going to be perfect but you're doing art which is good so i came from a background of traditional and then when i went to university we were learning more traditional stuff as well we were told to go out and sketch places uh, in the city every week there'll be a new place we'd have to go and sketch we'd have to take 20 thumbnail sketches from different angles of this place you know five minute sketches and then there was the final image that we had to do uh, of of the place so there's that kind of element you know drawing fast just repeating uh, and learning the skills um, there's other ways that you can do traditional studies as well uh, still life so setting up something on your desk with lighting experimenting with mediums um, a popular one is uh, watercolor and gouache you see that a lot there's some really amazing artwork um, that people do uh, oil paint might seem a bit intimidating but honestly all you need is like a red a yellow and a blue a white and some uh turpentine to wash your brushes and some medium some sort of oil so you can pick up a few things like that uh i will try and remember to put a link in the description to some examples of things you can buy but there's literally just a handful of things that you need it's really not as scary as it would seem initially uh plein air painting or sketching like i say going out and sketching on location painting on location with uh, things like watercolour, uh, even, you know, anything, pastels, whatever you feel like using. Uh, what else? So doing lots of studies, uh, it's kind of tedious, can be really fun. Again, with art, there's always those lows and highs, like I say, so there might be moments where you hate them, moments where you enjoy them, but doing lots of studies, so that can be photograph studies, photographs you've taken, photographs on the internet, um, master studies, traditional, um, you know, like singer sergeant, things like that. So it, there's a, a mix of, you could do anything like master doesn't really mean much in this day and age, I suppose. It can just be someone you admire, do a study of their work, uh, with permission if they still are on this earth. Uh, and like I say, still lifes. One thing that is important with studies and something that can help you out a lot and make the process a bit less painful is choosing good reference. This applies to everything, uh, drawing on location, still life studies, choosing reference that is good is very important. Um, something that you are capable of painting, something that isn't crazy noisy, that's gonna be make it very difficult. Uh, I think I'll probably make a video on choosing good reference or at least sort of doing studies in a kind of conscious way that will help you uh, rather than just trying to brute force your way through studies and making yourself sad because you can choose an image and you can say I'm going to paint this image but the image you've chosen you may not be aware of the fact that you're actually making it very hard for yourself um, like I say if the image is really noisy 
there's a lot of brush strokes that are actually very difficult to replicate unless you're choosing specifically to do a study on brush strokes. Um, but don't choose an image where you want to learn to paint foliage and then choose something that's super impressionistic because you're not going to be learning to paint trees there, you're going to be learning to replicate a very specific impressionistic style. Um, and there's a, various things to consider when making studies. So like I said, I think it's a whole other video really, but um, just try and understand why you're choosing to do that study. Like I say, brush strokes, colour, mood, uh, do you just really admire that artist's style? Uh, and focus on that. Be very aware of why you're doing that study. Uh, so here's a few tips for just trying to get into painting uh, in addition to doing studies. Uh, just little things you can try if you're feeling a bit stuck. Um, I'm sure there's plenty more, but here's a few of mine. Uh, try painting things imaginatively, but use reference. Uh, again, make it easier for yourself. But it really could be something as simple as doing a study and then taking that study, uh, sort of analysing the rough perspective of the image you're looking at, and then just putting a house in that image. It'll probably look rubbish to start with, but it's a very good exercise to teach you to analyse the lighting in a scene, the perspective, uh, the colours, uh, and try and bed something that isn't originally from that image, trying to bed it into that image. Uh, it's just like a slow way to start introducing imaginative, uh, imaginative painting uh, and before you know it you'll be painting your own stuff. Uh, experiment with brushes and layer modes. Uh, don't become reliant on them but just have a little bit of fun with brushes. Uh, I find that being abstract in Photoshop can be really fun. Um, there is a sort of problem with texture brushes that can become a little bit distracting and dominant. They can mask issues with your fundamental ability to paint. Uh, but there's nothing wrong with just taking a load of images on different layer modes, like smushing them around, you know, blurring them, just get, go abstract and experiment because you'll find little things that kind of can elevate your paintings and give them your specific stamp. Um, photo bashing, playing with photo bashing. Uh, there used to be a big hoo-ha about whether or not we should be allowed to photo bash as artists. I think we're past that point now, I hope. But uh, photo bashing is super useful. It's great for teaching you to achieve consistency in an image. So uh, you'll look at a photograph that you've chosen uh, and you're trying to bed it in with the rest of an image that you've maybe assembled from other photographs and you need to analyse that image and see what you need to do to make it work as part of the bigger picture. So do you need atmospheric perspective? Do you need to lighten it, darken it? Do you need to denoise it, uh, desaturate it, add more colour to make it sit in the environment that you've assembled? Um, kind of similar to the painting something imaginatively. Um, because it's a photograph, uh, everything is kind of grounded to reality. Obviously, it's a photograph of the existing world around us. So it's kind of easier to notice when things are going wrong, which is I would say a good thing, at least when you're learning, because you can look at it and go if something feels wrong and try and figure it out with an understanding of obviously lighting and so on, which will come with time and get better. Uh, I'm painting over your photo bashes as well. So I used to do things like uh, I do a uh, like a photo bash and then I would just go in with like the smudge tool and uh, brushes and just kind of paint over it and have a bit of fun. Uh, let me see if I can find it actually. Uh, it was in my WordPress. So you've probably seen it if you've looked at all uh, through my blog and sort of had a bit of a laugh at some of the stuff I've posted. Um, let me switch camera. Well not camera. Remove the overlay. Uh, let's have a look. You can see all the things I was inspired by. So yeah, this is a master study that I did. Uh, there's a few. That's like more imaginative painting using 3D models. So this is like photo bashing and then painting over the photo bash. Again, photo bashing and painting over the photo bash. Uh, there's sort of a, a mixture of like different techniques I'm using here. Um, there is one definitely somewhere. 
Oh, it might have been like summer of 2015 actually. Experimenting with textured brushes. Trying to not get too carried away and frustrated by things that aren't working. Here we go. This is exactly what I'm looking for. Got there eventually. Um, so these are two images that I did uh, a long time ago, 2015. And this is where I really started to feel like I was having fun with photo bashing. I don't tend to use photo bashing very often anymore. Uh, you know, your style kind of drifts and you choose to do things for a while and then I might come back to photo bashing or whatever. But uh, this was just a bunch of photographs. Um, just beginning to like feel, feel like I get getting perspective a little bit. I mean, it is off, like this building is very exaggerated, but I'm having fun with it, which is the important thing. Uh, and the same with this one. This image is totally just, it's just textures, smushing bits around, experimenting, you know, there's a kind of a feeling to the light. Uh, you know, there's sort of light coming in maybe from up here and it's illuminating things silhouettes and values I'm beginning to experiment with. It doesn't have to be perfect, I'm just having fun. Uh, you know, there's no no real form to anything. I'm not trying to understand how lighting hits like the edge of a building and how that's going to look. I just made it a silhouette because it's kind of more fun that way. Um, so this is exactly what I'm talking about. This is all photo bashed and then just painted over a little bit. So I'm just having fun with it. Uh, and it sort of helps you develop skills with like photo bashing, embedding photographs together, getting the atmosphere consistent. And then it takes some of your painting skills as well and brings those in. So you're kind of experimenting with both things there. Uh, what else? Let's switch that. Ta -da. Um, try painting tiny scenes. So again, if I'm feeling super frustrated and I'm just, nothing's happening, uh, I might just paint some grass or a rock or a flower, give myself a little victory with something like that. Uh, and then, you know, I can extend the painting if, if it goes well. I can add some more flowers. I can add some more grass. can maybe add the edge of a building in. Uh, and then, you know, my confidence will grow and maybe I'll get inspired again or I just leave it there. There's, you know, it, there's no kind of end game to this. I'm just painting, enjoying myself. Uh, in fact, I can probably show you that as well. Uh, let's go on Art Station and go with my super secret hidden stuff. Um, my portfolio. So these are all the existing images that are shown on my portfolio. And then when I delete things, I don't really delete them. I just make them private. So there's a lot of stuff on here that I don't have shown anymore. Uh, so I can zoom in on these and scroll down. So stuff like this pretty abstract, just playing with colours, lots of layer mode experimenting, like I said. Um, same with these, layer mode experimenting, uh, oil painting, oil painting. And then if I go further down, things like this. So I can only show the thumbnail, I can't actually load the project, but this was a little thing that I did when I was just totally hating art and I just decided to start painting some like, jar things, some foliage and some wood for no reason. Uh, same with this one, just started out just smushing some colours around, trying to make it feel somewhat like something but not stressing about it. So just little things like that. Give yourself little victories. Uh, experimental photo bashing, experimental photo bashing. Um, so yeah, just experiment, don't stress. Uh, another thing that isn't really a point of contention anymore in a similar vein to uh, photo bashing is 3D blockouts. Experimenting with 3D can be very, very useful. It can provide you with a skeleton to flesh out. Uh, it can be as simple, as complex as you like. You know, it can be literally just cubes with some lighting uh, that you do in Blender. Blender is free. I find uh, Unreal Engine really fun to just experiment in. You can you can literally walk around your scenes if you want to. So I use that a lot, um, which means the the blockouts themselves aren't very finessed. So in Blender, often you'll take like a render 
Uh, it has some very good real-time uh, capabilities, I've heard, but often you'll sort of take a, a render in Eevee, I think, or Cycles. I don't know. I don't know the things. Um, so then you have like an image that you have to wait for a while for it to be done. Whereas I literally just slap it into Unreal and like take a screenshot and that is my block out. Sometimes the lighting's a bit janky, but it just is a skeleton. Just very simple, literally just puts down some perspective and lighting for me. It takes the pressure out of painting. I can just do some line art over it. If I need more detail in the block out, I can go back and add it in. Uh, that's often how I paint. So at some point I'll do like a, a video showing that process start to finish, maybe. It sounds like a bit more editing than I'm used to or want to do, but at some point I will do it. Um, but yeah, it just leaves me to learn those complex topics, lighting, perspective, they're very, very difficult. And I can just enjoy the painting. And then if I have a question, I can deal with the question. I can learn the topic just a bit more of a chill pace. I just want to be chill. That's all I want. Art's hard. Don't make it harder for yourself. Uh, so yeah, that's it. Be hungry to learn and understand things. Uh, the process will be very slow. If you're struggling, just go back to small things. Go back to studies, studies you can do, and then come back to the, you know, the hard imaginative stuff. Mix the two up. Uh, the journey is years. It's not months or days. Um, you'll have little kind of month or day long happy stages and sad stages. Um, but it is a journey. You will get there. Um, and yeah, I know it's very stressful and it, the temptation to buy just a ton of books and tutorials, read the things it will go in one ear and out the other because you won't have the sort of context um, to fully understand what you're reading, I guess, like at the beginning, I mean. Uh, I have tons of books now. Well, not tons. I have some books now. <laughs> I'm not a big reader. Um, but the books that I'm buying, I've had a couple for years. Like I said, I read them and I literally don't remember anything. And then I'm starting to buy more books. So I've got a few uh, that like are a bit more hardcore, uh, like Edgar Payne's Composition of Outdoor Painting. Um, I haven't even opened it yet, but this is something I specifically wanted because I love Edgar Payne's work. So now I'm beginning to assemble my library. I've been digital painting for f nine years or something. So now is the point I'm like, huh, maybe I should probably try and read properly about composition. Um, there's a certain amount that comes to you. You feel it out. You might have heard tidbits of information from people you know. Uh, you might pick something up from like a free YouTube video or whatever, but don't stress about spending loads of money on books and stuff like that. Uh, I really would say the best remedy is to just do the art and you'll get there. Thank you for watching. Uh, I'm on Patreon. Uh, there's a Gumroad waitlist now for any... I do group mentorships. Uh, I have one coming up in September, which is booked, but I have set up a waitlist so those people will be informed a week in advance of any stuff that I'm going to announce. Um, so yeah, feel free to add yourself. Uh, it's on Gumroad, so I think you have to enter payment information, but it's free. So you, like, you obviously you don't need to pay to be on my stupid waitlist. Um, and yeah, I think that's everything. So thank you very much for coming and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.